Hi there, this is Harry and welcome back to my English lessons where I try to help you to get a better understanding of the language and today we're going to look at some vocabulary. We're going to try and get you to expand your vocabulary a bit and look at different words and expressions and the focus today will be on boring. Hopefully you don't think this is boring, please don't think this is boring, but I'm going to give you other words that mean boring and give you some examples specifically as how you can use them. So I'm going to go down through them first of all and give you the list and then I'll go through them as I usually do one by one and give you those examples. Okay so different ways to say something is boring. So uninteresting, dull, mind-numbing, humdrum of life, bland, mundane, tedious, I was dying of boredom, it does nothing for me, and finally it's about as exciting as watching paint dry or as exciting as watching the grass grow. Okay, so let me go through them one by one. So the first one is uninteresting, very common word, I'm sure most of you have heard of it. So how do you use it and when do you use it? Well, it's the opposite of interesting, of course, so if there's something that you just don't really want to know about some topic at school, something on the TV. Ah, that's uninteresting. It's not what I really like. It's very uninteresting for me. It could be an article that your wife or partner has read about and they start talking to you about it and your eyes just glaze over and she says, oh yeah, this is not so uh, interesting for you. No, it's very uninteresting. It's not something I really have an interest in. Okay, so the next expression or word is dull, and it's D-U-L-L, -L, and the pronunciation D, dull, okay? And we can use this in many, many different ways. We can use it about the weather, and if you're in Ireland, it's a word we use on a very regular basis because the weather is often very dull. Dull means I open the curtains, I look out, it's grey, a little bit misty, a little bit dark, a little bit cold. How's the weather today? Well, Dull as usual, yeah? Or uh, really, really dull. But stories can be dull. Dull because they are boring. Dull because they are uninteresting. Yeah, that TV series, it's so dull. I mean, there's nothing ever happens in it. Well, I don't know why we're watching it and whoever thought that would be interesting. It's really dull. So books can be dull. Movies can be dull. People can be dull. Oh, those new neighbors that moved in. Have you spoken to them? Oh, yeah. He is so, so dull. She's very uh, interesting, but he is very, very dull. Okay, dull. Okay, so next we have mind-numbing. Be very careful here because you get to squash the words together and get the right pronunciation. Mind-numbing and numbing spelled N-U-M-B-I-N-G. And the B is one of those silent letters, nind. So there I go, making a mistake. Mind numbing. So you have to be really, really, really careful. Mind numbing. So what does it mean? Well, mind numbing means your brain almost freezes. A bit like having a very cold ice cream. Do you ever get that brain freeze when you have an ice cream? No. Yeah. So when something is mind numbing, you just go blank. You lose total interest in everything and it's really not so good. Okay. So something mind numbing could be a lecture you go to. So somebody drags you along to a lecture, it's talking about something to do with the atmosphere or something to do with the environment or something that you're just really not interested in and you're sitting there fidgeting and <laughs> this, this is so mind-numbingly boring. I really, really don't like it at all. Okay, so mind-numbing, mind-numbingly boring. Okay, something that you really don't find interesting and you just lose complete interest. Your mind goes blank and you switch off. And now for an expression, the humdrum of life. So why does that mean boring? Well, it's not boring in that extent, like a book that you put down and you'll close and you just switch off or the TV that you'll switch off and the TV series is, is boring. But the humdrum of life means something exactly the same day in, day out, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. So it just goes on and on, very repetitious, okay? So when we're into that sort of routine and Often routines are good, but after a while they get a little bit boring, okay? So the humdrum of life. So you go into work and you're chatting to your friends and say, ah, you're looking a little bit gloomy today or a little bit depressed. Ah, it's just the humdrum of life. You know yourself, same thing, same old thing every day. Humdrum of life. 
Okay, so back to some vocabulary. Well, the word bland also means boring. So how do we use bland? Well, we don't describe a person as bland or we don't describe uh, the clothes you're wearing as bland. But things like uh, the colours in the colour scheme in a room. You go to a hotel with your partner and when you look at the hotel room, it's not so exciting. It's maybe a three-star hotel. You say, hmm, it's a little bit bland, a little bit uh, dull, a little bit boring. Okay. Often we use the word bland to describe food that we don't really like the taste of or we don't get any real taste for it. So somebody presents you with a, a, a cake, a new recipe, and you taste it and well, actually, you don't really get the taste of anything in it. It's a, it's a little bit bland, isn't it? It could do with a little bit of spice to, to spice it up. Yeah, something to give it that little bit of zip, a little bit of a taste. So at the moment, nah, the soup is a little bit bland. So add a little bit of salt, add a bit, little bit of pepper, and suddenly, hmm, that tastes nice. So you take the blandness out of it by adding some spices. So when something is bland or tastes bland, very boring, plain, very ordinary, and that's the same with the bland look, as I mentioned, of the hotel room. Yeah? Okay, so bland. Okay, and the next word is mundane. Just be careful with the pronunciation. M-U-N-D-A-N-E, mundane. Dane like somebody from Denmark. Danish, yeah? So mundane. And mundane means everyday, but every day in a sort of a boring, repetitive way. Oh, mundane. This work is so mundane. Everything is the same. I'm working in a back office. I look at these files. I post them. I clean them up. I tidy them. I save them. Whatever I have to do, but it's the same repetitive work. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever day of the week, the work is exactly the same. Now, be careful of the pronunciation as I said that we have the day of the week, Monday, mundane okay now mondays can be very mundane because it's the most boring day of the week the beginning of the week and every oh mondays yeah wait we get those uh, over with so monday is mundane mundane is boring mundane is ritual it happens all the time but not in an exciting way so life can be a little bit mundane when nothing happens okay so mundane Okay, so when you check up boring in the dictionary and you're looking for synonyms, you're going to come across the next word, tedious. Okay, now it's not necessarily boring in the sense that you just don't want to do it and you want to put it away, but tedious means a little bit difficult, okay, but it's something that is with a lot of little detail and really, really, you don't want to do it. So a crossword puzzle could be quite tedious, you know, you're trying to get all these clues and you come across the last two and you just can't get them and it's a little bit tedious. Or if you're knitting and you're trying to make sure that all the stitches are counted properly, that work and that handcraft can be a little bit tedious. So it's usually referring to tiny little details that become repetitive, become a little bit difficult and you have to spend a lot of time dealing with it and you'd prefer to be doing something else. Yeah, so tedious work. Okay, so if you're painting your room and you've got a big paintbrush and you're lashing the paint here and there, everything is wonderful. But when you come to the little details, you know, around the door frame, around the light frame, that work can be a little bit tedious because it takes you a long time. You've got to be extra careful, otherwise your wife will complain when you get paint on the light bulbs or paint on the light fittings. So it can be a little bit tedious and as a result can be a little bit boring. So any of that small, tiny little bit of work that take that extra little bit of attention, that extra little bit of care, and you don't really have the time to do it, that's what we can describe as tedious. Okay, so we have a, an expression now, dying of or dying from boredom. You can use either of those prepositions, doesn't really make a difference which one you use. So you're dying of boredom or you're dying from boredom. So you're sitting in the lecture hall uh, day after day and you're going through all of these lectures on international marketing or international law or diplomacy, whatever it might be. And, you know, you've really had enough and you're sitting there looking at the watch, looking at the clock on the wall, wondering when this professor is going to end. And you're just dying of boredom very, very slowly. The day is passing 
very, very slowly and you're again looking at the watch and oh, yawning, wishing you could be somewhere else, out in the field playing football, sitting in the cafe, chatting to your friends, but you have to sit through this extra lecture just to catch up. So dying of boredom, the topic isn't really so interesting to you. Time dragging by. So die of boredom or die from boredom. So anything that really drags the day out or drags the meeting out means that you're sitting there and if it's not so interesting, then you're, you are literally dying from boredom. Okay, well, another expression is it does nothing for me. And depending on where you put the stress, it does nothing for me or it does nothing for me. Yeah, so it depending on how much emphasis you want to put on it. Well, it literally means that you're not interested in it, you're not excited by it, and it's a little bit boring. So you go to a house and you're looking around at the, the, the rooms to see, can you get any tips as to how you might redecorate your home, how you may revamp your house, and you look in the rooms, well, this does nothing for me. There's nothing here that I th think where, where will add any value or any benefit to our home. Let's go and we'll look at something else. So when something does nothing for you, it means it doesn't float your boat. It doesn't light you up and think, yeah, really, that's really something we, we could do. Yeah. Or uh, a meal out in a five-star restaurant where all the waiters in beautiful uniforms and the bill costs an arm and a leg and the food is a little bit bland. That might do nothing for you either, yeah? Whereas you might be much more suited to going for a hamburger to TGI Fridays and uh, lashing on the tomato sauce and having a glass of beer and thinking, ah, oh, this is a, a really, really good night. So it all depends on what you're comparing this with that. And if something doesn't do anything for you, it doesn't float your boat, it doesn't get you excited. So when we say it doesn't do anything for me or does nothing for me, it means we're not interested and we're a little bit bored. Okay, and the last expression I have for you is, it's about as interesting as watching paint dry or watching grass grow. Okay, so this is the ultimate in insults when somebody tells you that's what they think about your, your lecture or your presentation or your performance, whatever it might be. Oh, here we go again. We've got to go along to another staff meeting. Those are about as interesting as watching paint dry or they're as interesting as watching the grass grow, meaning I've no interest in those. They really, really do nothing for me. And I find them very, very boring. So there are lots of things in life that are um, as interesting as watching uh, paint dry. But sometimes, unfortunately, we have to sit through them. One of the boss's speeches. Yeah. One of our aunt's stories about the, the wartime. Whatever it might be, we have to be a little bit polite and we have to listen to it. But at the end of the day, they're about as interesting as watching paint dry or as interesting as watching the grass grow. Okay, so let me go through all of those again for you and then we'll wrap up. Okay, so we're looking at the word boring and some expressions how to say boring in a slightly different way. So what we've looked at are some words and some expressions. Uninteresting, dull, mind numbing, the humdrum of life, bland, mundane, tedious, and then a few expressions. I was dying of boredom or dying from boredom. It does nothing for me. And then about as interesting as watching paint dry or watching the grass grow. Okay, well, thanks for listening. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and join me on my website for more interesting aspects about the English language. And I'll catch up with you soon.